you take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Oh, a lot of giant fans are taking that blue pill. This is Tim Stewart, Giant Straight Talk, powered by Online Big Blue LLC. The game against the Houston Texans is finally over. I don't go by scores in preseason. And I also don't go by wins and losses because it's it's not a indication of what your season's going to be. I've seen teams go 0 and 3 and I seen you know look wonderful in the seasons. I've seen teams go 3 and 0 and look like shit. So what you really have to look at more is how your first team unit plays against the other team's first team unit. Now the Giants first team played the entire second half. I was actually very happy about that because I discussed it. Uh, I talked about it about a week ago where I said the Giants should do something different and play their guys for the entire first half. And that's what they did. And it gave you a real indication of what this team might be in 2024. The Giants, that is. Because to me, the, the Houston Texans is the gold standard. They are one of those gold standard teams right now who, who are built and constructed extremely well from the first team, to the second team, hell, even down to the third team to the fact that you watch this game and you could see the, the difference in talent levels. And you have to have some concerns going into the season. And we're going to have to, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about Daniel Jones. We're going to talk about Kayvon Thibodeau. We're going to talk about Brian Burns. We're going to talk about Tommy DeVito a little bit. We're going to talk about some of our starting guys. Cause they, our starters had issues with the Texans second and third teamers our starting offensive line was giving up pressure to second and third teamers of the Texans towards the end, towards the middle of the second quarter. And at the end of the second quarter as well, that's, that's gotta be a concern. And then when, when the starters were in uh, that just made it worse. I mean, the, the, the Texans rush, because was basically doing what they wanted to do to get to Daniel Jones. Ergo, the two interceptions. Ergo, the two bad interceptions. Um, and, and that was just a horrible throw. You have a six-year quarterback that still makes the same mistakes over and over again. People are going to talk about how he was 11 for 18 for 138, but you know, we're not going to talk about that his quarterback rating was 45.4. We're not going to talk about the two interceptions. We're not going to, people are going to talk about the four catches for 54 yards at 13.5 for Malik neighbors with that long 21 yard pass. People aren't going to talk about the fact that Daniel Jones threw it over the wrong shoulder, twisted his rookie wide receiver into a pretzel. And potentially that's when bad things happen. His ball placement is still not there. His pat, his mate, most of his passes came against the second teamers. And for him to continuously continue to continuously continue to continuously continue to make the same mistakes in year six is dumbfounding. And one of the biggest issues I saw immediately was the fact that on his big pass play, Daniel Jones is a big pass play, the slate in the 44 yard pass play, which I love it. Cause I watched the Texans broadcast and it's great because as a giant fan that who, who sees what Daniel Jones really is, you hear them talking about Daniel Jones. You're like, okay, I'm not fucking crazy. I am in the giant bubble. That's why I'm hearing what I'm hearing. Uh, I love the one announcer on, on the 44 yard pass. He goes, that's probably the best pass of Daniel Jones's career. What? And then they're talking about how he's not consistent. Oh, it, it was great. Cause I, I literally was talking to OGR sports and Hey, I'm not fucking crazy because other people see this besides me. But on the big 44 yard play, Dable had to call a timeout because Dable, the coach from the sidelines did not like what he was seeing on that play. He did not like what he was seeing versus the defense. It wasn't called by your six year, $160 million quarterback. It was called by the head coach. And which then resulted into the 44 yard play. You wasted, you didn't waste the timeout because you scored on that drive, but your sixth year quarterback should recognize these things and have the ability to dissect what he sees on the field and make the proper call and call for timeout, call for a timeout, plain and simple. It's, it's not, it's not that difficult. And I get concerned that when you see things like that, you're like, okay, we only get three timeouts a half. So what does Dable have to read the defense for Daniel Jones? 
Now, of course, the the uh, as soon as a play called in, he walks up to the line of scrimmage. The, the helmet cuts off, so you know that's not going to happen. But your six year quarterback couldn't make that decision on his own. That I, I don't know. I don't. I mean, he's he's here in year six, and some of the throws he was making, you were just like, and some of his other throws, you're just like, I I don't get what he sees. Yeah. It's very. It was very distressful to see him play. And let's let's. And I think the truth was finally exposed with Tom, with uh, with Tommy DeVito. Tommy DeVito is not an NFL quarterback. He's not a starting NFL quarterback. Can we just stop the fucking Tommy DeVito shit? I know the Giants are always worried about cutting someone and have them go to another team and have them become something. But Tommy DeVito is not an NFL quarterback. Please, can we stop? Can can we stop with Jersey Shore, Tommy? Please, can can we just end that fiasco? One of the other causes of concern I had, and I've had since the beginning of the season is our beginning of uh, free agency and beginning of the fact when we made that Burns trade, that there was going to come a time and it already happened where cave on Thibodeau and Brian Burns are negated out of a play at the same time, or they're going to go, ext- they're going to go periods of time where they don't gain any pressure. They don't make any tackles and that was on full display today. Neither one of them made the stat sheet and they played an entire half. There was the time that the Texans were backed up in their own end zone. CJ Stroud in the shotgun sat in the back of that pocket like it was nothing. And I laugh even more because of the fact that you had the likes of Kayvon Thibodeau and Brian Burns being blocked one-on-one with the right guard and right tackled prospectively. They were a non-factor. They were a non-factor against a pretty good offensive line against a second year quarterback, but they couldn't even sniff any pressure on them. And, and I think that, that to me is, is, is even more distressful. Oh, I'm sorry. Cave on Thibodeau did have a tackle. That's right. Cave on cave on Thibodeau did have a tackle. <laughs> He did have a tackle. Oh, and Brian Burns had a tackle too. I'm sorry. So they each had a solo tackle. I'm sorry. They each had a solo. What was I thinking? They each had a solo tackle. But they were not able to generate any pressure on a second year quarterback in his own end zone. And he was literally standing, CJ Stroud was standing in the back of the end zone. I was hoping he was going to step out of bounds. But this is what I've talked about since the day we went out and got Brian Burns. There are going to be days. There are going to be games. There are going to be plays. There's going to be opportunities where these guys are going to put up goose eggs because it's just the way that they're neither one of them is consistent. And that's what I always get really worried about with this because I have this feeling that it's, and I said, this was my biggest thing. I I was worried that we are going to be down by four. Uh, Dallas is going to be driving with like a minute left. We're going to need a big play. We're going to need a big stop. And both of these guys are going to whiff. And and that should be scary right off the bat. Like I said, I didn't see any pressure. I didn't see. And like I said, when this guy, when, when you're second, your quarterback can stand in the pocket, in the end zone, in the back of the end zone, and your two stars are being blocked one-on-one. That's what I'm worried is going to happen during this season. And I spoke about this since the beginning of this trade. Can we also get rid of Dane Belton now, please? Dane Belton and Isaiah Sims. Can we get rid of both of them, please? Dane Belton on that cam makers reverse run when he, when he reversed fields made Dane Belton look like an idiot. And then Dane has this propensity to try to punch. And it doesn't look like he's trying to punch the ball. It looks like he's trying to hit the guy, which is automatically going to be a penalty one day. But he got fooled so bad when he reversed field. Cam Akers, that was on that play in the second half that it wasn't even funny. And Isaiah Simmons, man, Isaiah Simmons is supposed to be this X, X factor. They were picking on him and beating on him like he stole something. I, and like I said, yes, the, the, te- the, the Texans are the gold standard. They are truly the gold standard, but you are, you, a lot of people use the Detroit lions as a barometer, but I kept saying that's against the third teamers, four teamers and home depots. This, you literally played 
a squad for, and they only played their guys for a quarter. The Texans, they only played them for a quarter, but the giants had a difficult time even going after and beating the second teamers of the Texans with their first teamers. You saw the disparagingness and disparagingness. You saw the difference in talent levels. I can't even talk today because I'm still upset. You saw how bad and how different the talent on the Texans. And I love it because the the Giants were talking about one point in time, Bob, Bob, well, the Giants are going to have some tough decisions to make about uh, cutting guys because they're going to cut some good guys. I don't see these good guys are going to be cutting. The Texans have a bunch of wide receivers. They're going to have to get rid of at least two of them. The Texans have guys you look at saying, okay, there are going to be guys on the, they're going to hit the street. that are going to make NFL rosters immediately. I don't see that with the giants. I would got to give, I got to give credit of course to our old buddy, Brian Dables. He was smart. He played his guys. I said that for like a week ago, play him for a half, see what they got. Well, we played him for a half. We saw what they got and we got the same Daniel Jones and we got the same defense. And I hope Shane Bowen understands you are not going to be able to generate a rush with four with this secondary. That's what I think you need to look at. Cause like I said, you know, they threw for only 255 yards, but you had a Stroud was 8.8 average seven for 10, 88 yards <laughs> and basically no pressure. We're gonna have a big old live stream tomorrow. So make sure you stay tuned for that. That's gonna be 10 a.m. Eastern standard time. That's Sunday giant. And as always, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell because you want to know why. That'll be awesome.